welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. This is the fourth of six candidate mini projects that you can choose from. And in this mini project, we're going to look at the Black Rapids Glacier, which is along the Richardson Highway in the Alaska Range from 1986 to 2010, and basically create some images showing the recession of that glacier in a warming climate period. So the first step will be to download the data as a registered user. So register as a user with earthexplorer.usgs.gov and the first thing we'll do is download the 1986 image. So if you go to data sets and then Landsat archive, Landsat 4 and 5. And then under the additional criteria tab we'll specify the path and row we're interested in. And we're interested in path 67, row 16. And then we'll say, give us those scenes, path 67, row 16, less than 30% cloud cover. And then we'll specify the date we're interested in. So in this case, under search criteria, we're interested in a date from July 1986 to October 1, 1986. So then we'll search for months September, August, and July. And then results. So here's a scene from the 14th of September 1986. And we could click on the footprint to see where that's located. So here's the Alaska Range in Black Rapids Glacier is about at that location in the Alaska Range. The Richardson Highway is going to go from Big Delta down to Valdez. So this is Isabelli Pass, and this is the Black Rapids Glacier area. And then we could actually look at it. So if we show Browse Overlay, so here's the actual scene, and you can see that it's cloud-free in the location of the Black Rapids Glacier. So then we'll order that scene. So as a registered user, you could download it. So then we would click on the download option and download the level one product and then just download that. Okay, the second scene we're interested in is the same sensor Landsat thematic mapper, but it'll be from 2010. So all we have to do is change our dates and then do a search during 2010. So under the search criteria tab, We'll change our dates to 2010 and then show us the results. So we have two scenes from the 16th of September 2010. Here's path 67, and that's the one we want, path 67, row 16. And then show us that scene, so show us the browse. So here's the Black Rapids Glacier area, and you can see it is cloud-free. So then we would simply order that scene by clicking the download button. So download, and we'll download that level one product, 132 megabytes, and then just download that to your computer. Okay, so let's make a data frame, and we'll label this data frame 1986, and then we'll add three bands from the 1986 Landsat thematic mapper. We'll add the red, near infrared, and shortwave infrared bands to this data frame. So holding the shift key down, I select band 3, which is the red spectral region, and 4, the near infrared spectral region, and band 5, the shortwave infrared spectral region. And then just add those to my data frame. And then I'll composite these into a color composite, but first we'll zoom in on the Black Rapids Glacier area. So the Black Rapids Glacier area is in this location. So here's the Black Rapids Glacier, and then we'll zoom in even more. And then that's sort of the Black Rapids Glacier. So if we look at, for example, band 4 or band 5, here's the Black Rapids Glacier. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll composite within this extent of our view. So we'll use the Composite Raster tool. So we'll composite these bands from 1986. So if I hold the shift key down, I can select all three and then just drag them as our input rasters. 
So that will be band 3, 4, and 5. And then we'll output it to the same folder that has our 1986 spectral bands. So I named the output bands 3, 4, and 5, September 1986, and then just OK. So then under symbology, we could change our symbology to band 3, 2, 1. And let's do a two standard deviation. And we get something like that. Okay, so we did this and we did it for the entire scene. And we've got some clouds here that are going to affect our spectral uh, statistics. So let's do it again, but this time we'll just do it for the area that we were zoomed in on. So if we go to results, we do the exact same thing, but this time under environments, we'll specify our processing extent to be the same as display. And then our snap raster will snap to our original Landsat pixels. And then just OK. So that will give us a much smaller raster. And if we zoom out, here's our smaller raster. So then once again, for that smaller raster that's a composite, if we go to two standard deviation stretch, we have something like this. So then we'll do the same thing and create a composite for September 2010. Okay, so we've got our rasters composited and they're clipped out to the Black Rapids Glacier area. So here's 1986. And here's 2010. So our next step will be we'll label each view with the date of image acquisition. So 1986 was from September 14th. And 2010 was from September 16th. So if you right mouse click and pull up the drawing toolbar, you can choose text and then put that text anywhere in your data frame. And then using the pointer, we'll select that text box and then right mouse click properties. So here's our text. So we'll type in Black Rapids Glacier and then we'll center this text and then we'll change the symbol. So let's try making it a 28 point font, bold, italics, and then if you click on edit symbol, under mask, we'll give it a halo. So a halo will put a white halo around each character. And then OK, and then apply, and we'll see what it looks like. So then we want to center this text, and then apply, and then we'll just move this text block. So OK, and then we'll move the text block up to here. So here's our Black Rapids Glacier from 16, or the 14th of September 1986. And then what we'll do is we'll export that. So then if you go File, Export Map, you can export it as a JPEG if you want to go to a website. You can export it as a TIFF if you want to go to something like PowerPoint. So I'll export it as a JPEG. And we'll export it as 300 uh, DPI density. And I'll put it in, so I'll put it in this folder, Glacier Change, and I'll name it Black Rapids Glacier, 14 September 1986. And then just save that raster. So now that JPEG has been saved, and we could actually use that, for example, in a website. So then our second one will be our 2010 raster. So all we would do is change the date. So right mouse click properties, and that's 2010, and it's September 16. And then just OK, and then we'll export that. So file, export map, and it's going to be Black Rapids Glacier, 16 September 2010, and then just save. So here's what that JPEG would look like in a web browser. Okay, so for this mini project, if you choose to do it, what you would do is email me as an attachment your two JPEG files. 
So one from uh, 1986 and the second JPEG from 2010.